Good morning everyone. In this video I will show you guys how I created this overgrown post-apocalyptic warehouse in Blender and Substance Paint. But regardless of which software you're using, I promise that you will learn something today. All in all, this scene took me about 18 hours to complete, but I spent another 20 to condense it into a more easily consumable video. So sit back and enjoy. The place where I usually get my reference and inspiration is Pinterest. Ever since I finished playing The Last of Us Part 2, I wanted to create a moody post-apocalyptic scene in 3D. So I started looking for some more concrete ideas. And then I stumbled across this image. I didn't want to recreate the image exactly, but I used it as my main reference piece. I found FSpy to be the best software to quickly compile reference material. Now that I had a more specific idea of my scene, I was ready to jump into Blender. First, I had to do a rough sketch of the basic scene layout. I started by modeling the shape of the room uh, without adding any detail yet. Placing a human model into the scene always helps me get a sense of scale. Especially in larger scenes, it's useful to copy the human into different places. I like the idea of having an open garage door, which gives us a peek to the outside. Right here, I'm roughly sketching out the exterior. Again, not adding any details yet. Next, I placed a window in the back of the warehouse, which I want the camera to glance through. Adjusting the aspect ratio of the camera to make the framing a little bit nicer. Uh, my intention with the composition was to have a broken roof as the focus point, which makes a vertical ratio more fitting. Now that I've got the basic scene layout established, I'm moving on to the larger details. I imagine the ceiling to look a bit like those ugly foam tiles you find in schools and offices. So I quickly modeled one and used an array modifier to cover the room. I copied the edges to create some support bars. Now the fun part begins, destroying the beautiful ceiling I just created. I made use of proportional editing to bend the beams and make it look as if the ceiling had collapsed under its own weight. Now the scene needed some old light fixtures, which I modeled real fast, and then I placed them on the ceiling. Next, I made the garage door that I had planned. Every warehouse needs shelves, hence I modeled a shelf and duplicated it all over the room. This wall looked a little bland, therefore I made a door with a little room behind it. Now that the scene has some rough details, it's time to add materials and textures. This is the part where the image starts coming together. I begin by assigning materials to the different parts of the scene. Uh, the color doesn't mean anything, it just helps me differentiate the materials while UV unwrapping. I normally select Smart UV Project because, well, it's the easiest one. Uh, if that doesn't work, I try a different option, but in 90% of the cases, UV Project works perfectly fine for me. Once all the materials are assigned and UV unwrapped, we can jump into Substance Painter. I have to mention that Substance Painter is a paid software, but there are free alternatives like Quixel Mixer or Blender itself, while Substance Painter is the most advanced one in terms of texturing. Inside Painter, I mix different materials with masks to make the surfaces look dirty and weathered. This is one of my favorite parts of the process because everything starts looking realistic and all the modeling work finally pays off. If you'd like me to do a more in-depth uh, tutorial about Substance Painter in the future, tell me in the comments below. Once I feel like the materials look decent, I export them into Blender. This is non-destructive, so if I want to come back at any time and change anything about the textures, I can do so, as long as I save the file. Back in Blender, I took advantage of the Node Wrangler add-on, which lets you import all the textures at once by hitting shift Control t Adding depth of field on the camera properties makes any scene look more lifelike. Oh, and I modeled those beams to quickly create detail wherever needed. Right here, I placed them in a way that they create a nice window frame. Next, the camera needed some movement, so I animated it flying through the window into the warehouse. 
Lighting is the most important part of a 3D render. In most cases an HDRI or high dynamic range image is the way to go for realistic lighting. I am using the Easy HDRI add-on which makes it incredibly easy to browse and import HDRIs. But to make the lighting a little more interesting I added a sunlight and rotated it to shine through the opening in the ceiling. It looked like there was light shining through some small gaps around the lamp so I modeled a cover uh, that blocked the sunlight. It doesn't matter how this looks because no one will see it in the final render. At this point I like to do a test render to check which parts of the image need more work. Even though it's not perfect, it looks pretty decent for the first test render. I got this asphalt texture from Quixel Megascans and used a hue saturation node to match the color of the floor to the inside. Then I imported these facades from Megascans and built out the background. Only then I realized that the door on the right of the frame was missing, so I quickly modeled one and textured it in Substance Painter. I made it look as dirty as possible to match the rest of the scene. The room on the left also needed a door as well, so I just copied it over. Now the scene started looking more complete. More shelves and I used these beams from earlier to make the shelves in the foreground look more detailed. Next I created a window by screenshotting this copyrighted image of a broken glass sheet and projecting it onto a plane. By the way, to get a preview of the alpha you have to change your render engine to EV. Press N in the shader editor and change these two settings to hashed. Then you go back to cycles as quickly as possible. I used an array modifier to make the glass seem thicker and increased the transmission to make it look like actual glass. Looks fine if you ask me. I used my phone and this app called Polycam to scan our spice rack. I let it process for a minute and then imported the scan into Blender. Here I cut off the parts I don't need and placed the jars and bottles into the shelves. First the foreground, because foreground detail is important, and then I also filled the shelves in the background. In the reference image I saw these crates, so I made my own. Simple model, nothing special. I used an imperfection texture from Megascans to blend some dirt in. Next I copied the crate and some of the other assets to fill the scene a little more. Adding cables that hang from the ceiling was pretty quick. I just subdivided an edge and stretched it into the shape with proportional editing. After converting the cables to a curve, I was able to give them a thickness by increasing the bevel depth. Next, I gave them a dark brown material. The ground looked a little clean though, so I duplicated a few of the ceiling panels and made them look broken with a boolean modifier. I also used a particle system to scatter a few ceiling pieces on the floor. For most of the vegetation in my renders, I make use of the Graswald add-on, which is kind of pricey, but I believe it's worth every penny. But there is also a free version if you want to save some money. In weight paint mode, I can paint where I want my vegetation to be. When it comes to plants and nature, it is very important to add as many layers of different species as possible. Well, as many as your computer can handle. The floor in the foreground was still looking too clean, so I went back at the substance painter and painted some puddles. I removed the parts of the emitter that overlapped the puddles so that there wouldn't be any plants floating over the water. The outside definitely needed to be greener, thus I applied a similar particle system on the street, but I didn't make it as dense because it's relatively far away from the camera. So I actually went outside and picked up some cardboard from the trash to take photos of. Yeah, I know those slippers are pretty stylish. Anyway, I imported all the pictures into Photoshop, removed the background and made it into an image texture. Then I cut out all the pieces and scattered them using a particle system. I bought a tree pack a while back, but there are so many free trees online, so that shouldn't be a problem for anyone. For this scene they don't even have to be super detailed. Next I added some plants to the roof. 
I started with some IV models I got from Megascans and used Graswald to create a few more different plants on top of the roof. I placed an IV branch in front of the camera to make the framing a little bit nicer. Then I had the idea of water dripping from the ceiling, so I modeled a water droplet and I used a particle emitter system to emit it from the ceiling. Then I actually went outside again to take a video of a tree. I projected that clip onto a plane and put it in front of the sunlight to get some realistic shadows on the floor. Then I also duplicated the plane to make it look like the trees in the background were moving. I still needed to add clouds and a sky, which I did by putting this image onto an emission plane in the background. And there's a sky. My favorite way to add fog into the scene is the mist pass. It doesn't add any render time and it can be adjusted after the render. After rendering you can now mix the image output with the mist as a factor and set the color of the fog in the bottom sock. A color ramp node is great for adjusting the intensity. Next I like to use the glare node and set it to fog glow to get a nice glare effect. The last step is color grading in After Effects. I see that a lot of beginners forget to color grade their artwork, but in my opinion it is one of the most important and easiest ways to elevate your artwork to the next level. Well, and that's basically it. If you guys enjoyed my breakdown of this scene feel free to subscribe. From now on I will be uploading every other week. And if you like really enjoyed this video you can join my Patreon where I will upload my models and future Blender scenes. Also this one.